Welcome to the Talented Learning Show podcast series, episode number 59 with independent learning tech analyst John Lay. Today, I interviewed John Peebles, CEO and founder of Administry, about managing instructor-led training at huge scale. You can find more of our fiercely independent content at talentedlearning.com. Well, welcome back, listeners, to the Talented Learning Show. On this show, I am fortunate to interview the world's leading experts in extended enterprise learning solutions from both the vendor and the practitioner perspectives, and today is no different. From the vendor expert side of the fence, we're lucky to have John Peebles, who has built a TMS, a training management system, a solution that enables organizations that schedule and deliver live training at large volume. What? In the modern world of online learning and LMS, why focus on the old age topic of ILT management? Well, delivering measurable and incredible ROI for one important reason, market need and opportunity for a second and a third. Modern LMSs have largely left ILT management behind for electronic learning, but ironically and interestingly, many organizations have not, leaving a huge, cost-sucking administrative hole that John and his team know how to plug, and we're going to learn all about it. John, welcome to the Talented Learning Show. It's great to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. Awesome. This is uh, exciting. We first met all the way back in ATD 2015. In Washington, D.C., when uh, this idea of your solution was just a, a fledgling idea, and I've been watching it grow here over the last eight or nine years uh, until now, which is uh, what we're going to learn all about is uh, a pretty impressive and an ROI-generating beast uh, that you've delivered uh, for your organizations or for your clients. And so, but as it turns out, administrate's probably not a household name. So why don't we start at the top and tell us about your company and the solution and how you got started and what it is. And we'll go from there. Sure. And I think at the time I'd convinced you to award us the top learning platform in Scotland, uh, which, you know, I think we're still one of the only learning platforms in Scotland. So maybe we, we can certainly one on. of the best, certainly one yeah, of the best. continue on with that award. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're headquartered out here in Scotland, which is, you know, a little bit unusual for, for a lot of folks. Almost all of our business is done in North America, though, and obviously my my accent is American. Uh, but my kind of route to this, this problem and this solution that we have really started at a previous company that I was the CTO and COO of. It was a healthcare technology business based in South Florida. And we had a niche within a niche, which was pharmacy transaction processing. And it's not really important what we did, but we had to onboard a bunch of people, whether they were employees or they were customers or partners. And even if they were lifelong pharmacists, licensed and credentialed and all that, what we were doing was so uh, novel and specific that it required tons of training. And that fell under me. And so I had to figure out, you know, how do we train this fast growing company with, it grew to about 120 people in about five years. We had hundreds and hundreds of hospitals all across the US that were uh, subscribing to our services. And this training problem, we just, we could never find a solution that would scale, that would really deliver the kind of training that was required when it was required. And it hurt our growth, you know, and it was a big challenge that that just was an unsolved problem. And so when I when I left that company and was kind of thinking about what what's next, the the idea that there there's this problem of scaling a company and and basically scaling learning was kind of at the forefront of my mind. And I happened across this little tiny tool that had just recently been spun out from a train company. And they had built some software that were that was trying to solve their their needs of how do you you know, operate a, a training organization uh, at scale and grow it and and not have it all locked up in spreadsheets and paper and so forth. And so I joined on uh, to that to that idea because I, I really felt acutely the problem of not only getting the operations straightened out and uh, and implemented and scalable, but also having to justify budget to my CEO at the time. You know, where was this money going that didn't seem to really affect growth, but we all knew if we sat down and thought about it, that it was impacting us, demonstrating that was really difficult. And so it's kind of those two two sides of that coin. How do you get the operations running well? And then how do you demonstrate ROI? Like you mentioned, the, that's the problem that we're fundamentally trying to solve here in Administrate. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as I alluded to at the beginning, a lot of organizations or their perception out there, a lot of people solve this through 
uh, asynchronous online learning or, or e-learning. But when you're talking about training organizations, you're talking about scheduling and maintaining all the operations that go with with uh, scheduling uh, instructor-led training, uh, virtual instructor-led training or instructor-led training. Tell us about it. why is that still a problem? Isn't everybody just doing e-learning? It's a great question. And, you know, we don't hate e-learning or anything like that. Uh, we think it's a really useful tool. But I think what has happened is over the last 20 years, our industry is over-indexed on it. And I think that's easy to do, right? Because you and I, we're knowledge workers. We bring skills to the table and we get a new job and, you know, largely the COO skills that I had at my previous company were applicable to the COO skills that I needed at Administrate when I joined here. Um, the But there's so much training out there that is hands-on with equipment or needing specialized skills that you have to be taught that are unique to whatever the business that you're joining is. So the, the example I give a lot of times is it doesn't matter if you've been a BMW you know, plant worker in your entire career, if you go to a Mercedes plant, you got to relearn everything. And one of the most efficient ways, and we've known this for years, but one of the most efficient ways to get folks to really internalize. And, you know, I always joke that and it's true that uh, learning is behavioral modification, right? To, to actually modify a learner's behavior into the, the, the route that you want them to go, classroom training tends to be the most effective. And, you know, that's borne out by the fact that, you know, depending on what you read between 60 and 80% of all training in corporate America today is still done in a classroom, whether that's a virtual classroom or, or not. And, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, but that that's the reality. And that means that, 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 I, that whole area has been underserved over the last couple of decades, we believe uh, by, by the learning technology landscape. Interesting. And when you say uh, learning or we're talking about learning or ILT uh, at scale, what's that scale mean? What's your ideal customer profile? We tend to target large organizations. And by that, I mean, minimum a thousand employees. We, you know, there's obviously exceptions to everything uh, and there's fast growing companies and so forth. But where we can really help is at the problem of delivering training at scale. And for us, that means you know, hundreds and hundreds of instructors, thousands or tens of thousands of courses being run every year, tens of thousands of learners, if not more. Um, so your Fortune 1000 companies and up, your very sophisticated multinational organizations, they're running training all over the globe, all the time, trying to make it standardized. And these are, you know, these are challenges of training teams that could have dozens or hundreds of individuals uh, as part of them. So if, if you're a large company that is delivering training at scale in the you know, thousands of classes a year, you should, you should talk to us. That's, that's who we're targeting. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, why don't you dig deeper onto that for us on uh, what these challenges are? Are they just administrative? Is it, uh, I don't know, logistics. Uh, you're talking earlier about, you know, equipment like, uh, Make it salient for us. Sure. So, I mean, all of us have been to to school, hopefully. <laughs> some of us have gone longer than others. And some of us, you know, did better at school than others. I famously barely graduated. Still trying uh, to get there one day myself. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so we've all been students. Uh, but where I really had my eyes open was I, I grew up in China and in the 80s and 90s. And so when you're a, a foreign kid that uh, is out out of school for the summer and you're looking to make some, you know, get a summer job, it's a little difficult, you know? And uh, one thing that I did find that I could uh, get earn decent money at was, was English training, right? Teaching English. And so I kind of came on board at the, the seasoned age of 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, right? As a, a elite English instructor for a number of different training organizations and training companies in the Northeast of China. And you know, it was great. I could show up, we could you know, teach the curriculum and whatever and, and, and make a lot of money. But what I found was the actual administrative overhead that I then had to encounter as an instructor. So not only did I do all the work that I had to, to do about lesson planning and grading and all that stuff, but I had to, you know, fit into the schedules and the course and class, you know, room requirements and you know, some of my classes were kind of free to attend, which meant that there's capacity problems if the class got popular and we'd have to move around. And so all of that juggling and resource management work that I had never been exposed to as a student was kind of 
part of my job, right? And so I often think back, that was the first window into in, in my life into this problem of how do you deliver this classroom stuff to lots and lots of people, right? And make it standardized and so forth. So when we think about the challenges that are inherent in delivering classroom training, it's things like, where is it going to be? What what room is it going to be in? Do you have the right room? Is the right equipment in the right room? Does it need to be moved or staged into place? Does it need to be cleaned beforehand or checked after or calibrated? Do you have the right instructors? Do they Are their qualifications current, right? Uh, are the materials there that need to be that need to be sent over? Are there books? Is there e-learning pre-work or post? How do we get all that assembled and put together and, and ready to go for these students? And then how do we communicate all this to them? You know, how do, how do we send out emails to 